Hi, I'm Southern Shoddy, and today we have a new Blender 3.2 update, which means we're going to go through all the new features in less than five minutes. With that being said, let's get started. A long requested feature is finally here. We have light groups and cycles. This allows you to group collections of lights to use in lighting passes. This opens up a ton of creative potential for lighting artists in the compositor. We now have true shadow caustics in Blender. Example uses are underwater caustics and eye caustics. This is based on Manifold Next Event Estimation, a method developed for production rendering where precision and performance are important. It's intended to be used on few selected objects in your scene, and this first implementation has some technical limitations such as no reflective caustics, and check out these release notes for more details. Another big addition is Volumes Now Support Motion Blur. It works by using the speed attributes from volumes made in Blender or external open VDB files imported from other software. AMD GPU rendering is now supported on Linux for RDNA and RDNA2 graphic cards. You can override color management settings on the render output now. Some other changes include support using adaptive sampling with scrambling distance, alpha outputs on the object info node, and finally, you can now bake to UDM tiles. Apparently being the cool sculpting tool in Blender wasn't enough, because now you can paint in sculpt mode. With existing tools such as the various masking options, this makes it an advantageous option. The painting mode is now much faster and able to handle up to millions of polygons, plus new tools to modulate wet paint. There's a smear brush, color filters to modify existing colors, and you can mask by color. Vertex colors are now called color attributes. They've been refactored into more generic attributes that are faster, play better with geometry nodes, and support 8-bit and 32-bit colors in vertex or face corner domains. Geometry node curves got some hefty improvements across most nodes, with some seeing up to 13 times performance boost. Other nodes have been improved as well, full list in the release nodes. We have a new node called the duplicate elements, which can duplicate points, edges, faces, instances, and curves. Named attributes are back. Last seen in Blender 2.93 LTS, Support for naming attributes was removed in 3.0 to make room for the field system. They are now back as three nodes to get, set, and remove named attributes. The geometry nodes modifier now shows which attributes are used, and a new overlay shows which named attributes are used even inside node groups. The new faces planar node can tell when the triangles of an ingon don't lie on the same plane. There have been many minor adjustments to the UI as well for readability. We got a cool new grease pencil modifier. The envelope modifier draws a line between points for a pretty neat sketch-like effect. The dot dash modifier can now cycle the generated strokes. The build modifier has a new face mode and the smooth modifier can keep shape and got a much improved smoothing algorithm. Playback speed has been improved for grease pencil objects sharing the same data. We have a new curve pen tool in curve edit mode that can be used to be rapidly edit and create curves. You can now apply modifiers on objects with multiple users as well as applying location, rotation, or scale, finally addressing a long overdue request by the community. Select vertices with similar crease values and NURBS curves knots generation have been improved. Library overrides saw a big performance boost. Resyncing libraries is now over 10 times faster depending on the project. Adjusting library overrides is now much easier thanks to the new properties view in the outliner, displaying all overridden properties at once, plus the hierarchy view that shows relationships between properties. Collection assets are now supported. An automatic preview image is generated when marking them as an asset. We got a new experimental OBG importer and exporter written in C++, which is much faster than the previous importer. Blender now supports WebP, which is similar to PNG, but saves faster and generates smaller file sizes. The sequencer continues to be polished with the ability to name channels as well as lock or mute an entire channel. Handling of animated strips has also been improved with better filter method on transform and many more usability improvements. Virtual reality now supports more view options in HTC Vive Focus 3 controllers. The GLTF exporter has seen huge improvements across the board and has been refactored completely. FBX now has support for camera depth of field, F curves grouped by bones, and other small improvements. Animation has had lots of little user experience quality of life tweaks, including discontinuity filter is now available in the dope sheet. Bake action is available from the edit menu. Motion paths now select more sensible frame ranges by default and provide more options such as selected keyframes or all keyframes. Markers are easier to select and can be renamed with F2 now, the same way you can rename NLA strips. You can enter NLA tweak mode now without disabling all other tracks. Proxies have been removed for good in this release and Blender will do its best to replace existing proxies with the much more flexible library override. ED saw some minor under the hood changes, including plugging in a bump without height is now optimized. A shader compilation info has been moved to the viewport. Materials using shader to RGB no longer receive screen space reflections or subsurface scattering effects. And displacement bumps now affects image textures box projection mode. Bigger under the hood changes for EV are planned for the coming releases, so be looking forward to that. Python exceptions from the text editor are now displayed in the info editor, as well as the usual additions and deprecations in the Python API. These are a bit too technical to list out, so check the notes for exact details. As usual, there are hundreds of bug fixes, minor features, and improvements, which of course can be seen at the link in the description below. If you like what you see, go support Blender by joining the development fund.